is time. Twelve times now we've baked a mind cake and given you all a slice. Now it's time. For the 12th anniversary special, special. I said anniversary, but actually it's an episode. <laughs> special. Give me enough jelly to wrestle. Special. Jelly. This podcast like a vitamin supplemental. Yummy. Yeah, like skipping a favorite pebble. Special. <laughs> Don't be a dick thing, judgmental. <laughs> special. My daughter bit me, that kid is feral. Special. And remember, of course, that you are most special. Special, guys. 12 times. Twelve well, fucking times. We did it. We did it twelve times. Special. Maybe thirteen. It's unlucky, Special. but we'll do it. Fuck it. Begin. All is well. Twelve. <laughs> and James. Back again. Back again. We came to do more things. Didn't think that through. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thought was there. I, well, I just thought I could have a suave Bond esque opening. Like, I thought he was going to. The time has come. <laughs> I can't for, remember. For, for biscuits and. Burrowing animals. Of this I'm certain. <laughs> I've lived a life of badgers <laughs> and other things. I'm going to stop now. Yeah, okay. I think we're done. Okay, all right. So, uh, just to conclude, before we even get started, so, episode 12, welcome, thank you. It's, mm. um, we've got Borrowing Animals and, uh, that's me, and you've, you've got... I've got, I've got Biscuits. Biscuits. <laughs> oh, with that, I've got, yeah, yeah, I need to get something later on. We'll do a little pause later on, and um, I'll go get my thing. But they'll never know. Yeah. So we won't pause. I've got the thing I need right here already. <laughs> Planning. Should we let the sponsor in? Letting the sponsor. Come on. <laughs> this week's episode is sponsored by a fucking idiot dog. <laughs> Big stupid triangle ears and a tiny, tiny 50% dick. <laughs> Come on, dog. His uh, cock to body ratio is very skewed. Oh, which is dick. why he's such an absolute bell. He's alright though. He's a f- fine little weasel. But every time we start recording the pod, he starts scratching at the door. He obviously wants just wants to be, wants in, wants in. And now yeah. he's now he's happy as a uh, I don't know. Dog on the uh, sofa. Uh, yeah, dog on the sofa. <laughs> as the uh, as the special said in their nineteen seventy seven classic. Dog on the sofa, man. <laughs> okay, um so it's time. Uh next week's episode will be about Hang on. That's it. No, he's good job on you. He's good job on you. Good job on your lap. Don't, don't, don't. He's a dog, you fucking moron. Don't want you to do that. <laughs> oh, he's, he's wagging. Oh, God, it's, it's getting super aggro. Triplets. Sugar. <laughs> no, I'm going to wait now. <laughs> he's rude. Um, okay, so next week's will be. God, we have a lot of you put too many. I think we have to get it down, maybe like have. Four topics, and we picked the two because I put like like seven last week. And We're I was giving weird. the public too much choice. It's yeah. like when you go to, oh, we've got all these gins and stuff, and like you got like a book full of them. It's like just pick five. Fuck it, I don't like gin anyway. But well, from to my next week is dressage, oh, and TV mascots, oh, okay. So we're gonna go. What's your favourite there? Oh, blatantly mascots. So See, same here, right? So I figure we do. It. What we'll do is we'll do rock paper scissors to pick the one who gets mascots, and the other one has to do dressage. So, again, if you win this, you get the mascots. If you lose it, you dressage. Okay, so pick, ready? pick rock, right? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the the spa. You know how to do rock yeah, paper but, scissors. We've yeah, done it. For, yeah. We've done it recordedly. <laughs> doing it for like th- twelve, to many times. Almost twelve episodes. You just file up your back. So, come on, you ready? So, okay. Done two that. Oh, my, my reverse psychology of... Well, it wasn't. No, I told you to do rock. <laughs> you told me to do rock. <laughs> I did scissors and you screwed it. So um, I've got prancing fucking ponies. I mean, honestly, I don't mind. It was just for fun. But if you, you, do you really want TV mascots? Honestly, I'll, I'll do... I'll, I'm going to have to research from scratch anyway, no matter what. Because I think mascots... I, I think I could have fun with dressage, honestly. They look so silly. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some like some program the other day and it had like a royal carriage being pulled and the horses they treat they take they, they, they walk different they do this like little tiny steps it's very inefficient and they all just have their all their feet are in unison and it just looks so ridiculous 
And I just let him walk. Why have you got to complicate these poor horses? I mean, it's amazing they can be trained that way, but just let them walk. Yeah. Why you got to be bells? You know, just don't understand it. But um, so I'll dressage if you want. I'm I'm happy for you to take dressage. I'll dressage. Okay. Okay. But never let anyone know. I won. Okay. This my benevolence gave you TV mascots. It's all lies. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So that's that done. So and then um, we'll put a poll up. <laughs> Easy, man. <laughs> we'll put a poll up t- tonight or tomorrow about what your next weeks will be, and we'll use the. I thought pandas was going to get more love, but I mean they're fucking useless, aren't they? And whiskey and wine didn't, which is bizarre. But I think we'll, just, we'll put up a decent. We'll put up a compl- clean, clean slate. Mm. Pick like maybe four or five topics, and then you've got to pick the two biggest. Well, maybe we do two categories that we want to go on, <laughs> and the rest we just choose shit ones like. <laughs> like, oh no, like a belly button lint. Plug um, sockets. Yeah, oh, yeah. Don't, I could talk to you so much about plug sockets Fucking right now. Elbows. Elbows? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Alright, um, anyway. Mm. We're on the 1664 Cronenberg Blanc with a hint of citrus uh, with a cheeky little chaser of. Is it Gentleman Jack? Oh, hey, Gentleman Jack. You should probably get that going. Yeah. We need to get this yes, done. And then um, say so when just a little tipple, just a little you save your save your juice. Mm, I'm getting well whiskey. <laughs> it's just a smash. It's not a whiskey. Smash. Smash. That's that's a old artificial potato, isn't it? I say smash. Uh, yes, it is. It's smash. And uh, with, with the um, the Cronenberg Blanc one, it's got pretty bloody bottles. Um, I want to say a big thank thank you to the um, Norwegian gentleman in our lives, Bjorn, for introducing me to it. It's nice. It's nice. You should drink it all the time in the bands we went to pubs. And right. um, they just disappeared off the face of the earth. Yeah. And then they started releasing back in Tesco's again. So I'm like, well, I'm smashing that. I'm, totally. I'm buying on. Lemon beer is not fairy at all. I've got to say it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so we get into the actual facts. So this is the real, this, this, this is the second uh, Rock Paper Scissors this is this is it counts this time. This okay? time, don't they rock? Stop, because you're going to lose again now. <laughs> just, just let's just go for it, right? Go one, two, yeah. <laughs> oh, it works. Reverse psychology. Fifty percent of the time, it works every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Wondrous, like a like a like a mole. So, biscuits. There's two things. Which I'm going to get out of the way with, with my, my first two segments. Um, which are not... I, I don't know, but basically... Well, I'll do my first one. Then my next fact afterwards, after mm. you've done your bit. So, biscuits. American biscuits. Dicks. Um, if we've got any American listeners... We do. Yeah. 9% of our audience is American. 9% are wrong. 9%. Mm. What do you think? Because biscuits are wrong. <sighs> biscuits and gravy. I might make some because I tell you what they keep. I've I've seen you know you see those things where they like they make they show school kids they sort of say try American things yeah and they have like scones and gravy and they're like scones and gravy because they have like they're biscuits and gravy but they're basically a biscuit what they call a biscuit is a scone yeah scone yeah my missus calls it scone I just I was like I'm not gonna die on this hill so I just call them scones now but I was raised scones sorry mum I just gave up all your teachings. But <laughs> but you know that's that's you know whatever. <laughs> Look down this hill. Um, but it was so. But yeah, so they have basically a scone and then they have gravy on it. This is your fact, isn't it? That's all right. I won rock paper scissors. You know, fuck it. You know, do what you want. Go on. No, sorry, no. I, I saw it today, but no, they tried it. That's not my fact. That's not all the fact. school kids fucking loved it. They were like, "This looks gross. It looks like someone's been sick on a on a on a scone," because it does look disgusting. Yeah. And then they had it, and they're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. So now I'm like, I'm going to have to make gravy. They're, gr- you know, gr- quote-unquote gravy. Well, the ones I keep seeing on um, on social media platforms, the Book of Faces, Facebook, mm-hmm. it's like they do um, their their chicken, you know, their chicken sauce with chicken and biscuits. It looks weird, but I'd, I'd want to give it a go. Yeah, I would. I still am not going to call it biscuits, but... Yeah, this, I think uh, I'll, I'll definitely. I wouldn't be. I mean, I'm a fat bastard anyway. I'm not going to go no. If I was minted, like proper minted, right? Mm. I would fly, and I wouldn't go to. I go to the states. I wouldn't go to like all the obvious places. Yeah. I'd go to fucking Kentucky, all right? Yeah. I would 
go to some roadhouse. I'd watch some roadhouse. spit and sawdust <laughs> band playing in some shit. I'd eat some a basket of wings. I'd yeah. drink local bourbon, and I'd watch uh, and, and I'd get in a bar fight. And I, <laughs> genuinely, right, that appeals to me so hard. Just having and like, did you know, like you know the old uh, Bleach Brothers where they're playing behind a chicken wire? I'm like, yeah, I want to go to that bar so bad. <laughs> they're just all sitting there. They're all wearing cowboy boots and unironically wearing cowboy hats. They're actually seriously wearing cowboy hats, like they're in fucking costumes, like cops and robbers. Oh. But that's how they live their life. They're like, and everyone's fucking got a gun. Everyone's <laughs> got a gun. But they don't use them. They just punch. They just punch each other. So, I did, I did serve some at work last week, and I was wearing a Stetson. And honestly, I kept biting my tongue because I wanted to shout out, there's a snake in my boots. <laughs> I don't think that would be appreciated somehow. Yeah. But no, he seemed like a nice person. I think he would have he got with it, but it's, no, I'm, I'm a stranger to him. Everyone I've ever met, not many admittedly, but everyone I've met from Texas, yeah. especially Texas, are the nicest people in the world. Yeah. I mean, they'll fucking kill you, right? Yeah. But they're just because they're, like, they're, they're raising this really, it's quite strict, like militant, religious, like sort of, Area, but at the same time, it's a different vibe when you when you grow up and everyone's got a gun. It does change the way you treat people, because everyone's got a gun. Mm. Like everyone, people go to the bank. They're in lines. They've got a gun in a holster. Everyone, the yeah. whole queue. They've all got guns, and it's just like, guess I'm gonna shut. I won't say yeah. that sarky thing I was gonna say. <laughs> I won't do that. You know that sort of like <laughs> that passive aggressive like. I wish I could get away with it, you know, like, just, you, you, you won't try that shit, right? No. Um, anyway, sorry, go on. So I'll just read through my bit anyway, because I think that bit is much better than what I had anyway. <laughs> Basically, I just wanted to rag on Americans calling them biscuits. Biscuits were not fucking biscuits to scones. But anyway. But we'll, yeah. we'll try to try them. Yeah. Next uh, week. Absolutely. Next week. Next week. Okay. <laughs> so in the United States and Canada, eh? Hey. Um, a biscuit is a variety of baked bread with a firm, dry exterior and a soft, crumbly interior. It's made with baking powder as a levelling agent rather than yeast. Oh, nice. And at times it's called baking powder biscuits in uh, to differentiate from the other types. Biscuits developed from hard tack, which is first made from only flour, water, later... Uh, sorry. Did you fucking have a dog shop? Sne- sneezy boy. So hard tack is basically um, first made from only flour and water with later... First lard and then baking powder being added, so that's basically what biscuits are. Uh, simple, simple as shit. Um, mm. So I can't, got no excuse not to make it, I suppose. Now we'll make them. I'll make that gravy crap up with some sausage meat, and we'll um, we'll, we'll eat them and we'll, we'll we'll film it. Why not? Cool. Right. So that's that's my um, my my factlets done. Opening salvo. Yeah. Mine are burrowing animals. So the way I chose to do this was basically I'm going to focus on a different burrowing animal for each fact. And then just give a little rundown of the buggers because I think that's kind of I don't know. I was just trying to find something of interest about each one. Okay. So um, moles, molly, 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 molly. <laughs> I am a mole and live in a hole. Um, I slow moles. Um, I, I I got this the, the Wikipedia facts and I was going through and like, mm, mm, mm. and then I just was like, uh, so right. There's a few things like moles can dig tunnels at a rate of fifteen feet an hour, which doesn't sound that fast to me. I was like. It's not, but then you realise they're like, they're way smaller than you think they are. They're like six, seven centimetres long. They're tiny. They're really small. They they get like that that sort of they're, they're, they're like, you can get some that are a bit bigger. Like I, I thought they were at least the size of a. I thought they were like the size of a rat. Yeah. They're not. They're very very small. Oh, okay. So that was the first thing. There is a, a type that does get a bit bigger. Most moles are very, very small. It's the idea of like, oh, I've got moles in this field, and I go, you know, like, they're, they're a pest. It's not really true, because they, um, they don't tend to... But they, they, they live underground. They sleep underground, because mm. it's just safe under there, right? And because of that, they don't tend to ever get... They're not very threatened, because they never come to the surface, and they, they, they'll tend to eat crops from underground. It's pretty mad, but um, they can shift 540 times their own body weight of Earth and tunnel 200 metres a day. Which, again, when you're that small, 200 metres is like... It's a lot. It's the equivalent of like 20 miles, in like <laughs> if you were the size of a, a human. Um, they're similar size to mice, and they, they resemble mice or rats, or something, but they're not rodents at all. They're actually a whole different category of animals called insectivores. Uh, they're more closely, most closely of all the animals, related to bats. They're okay. just they're underground bats. 
<laughs> That's the best way to think about them. Um, that sounds funny. Uh, but they've got for some. They, they didn't know how to classify them like years ago. They didn't know how to uh, categorize them. So they called like because when, when, depending on like the um, the genus, the way that they sort of like work out where they come from. Don't. Um, <laughs> so like they thought they were like they related them. This is again like you're talking like very very long time ago. They related them to pigs. They put them in the same category as pigs. Damn, okay. Yeah, I don't know. All right, so, <laughs> really so that's mo- why little uh, the male moles are called boars, females are called sows. So they, they give they, they give those names, right? So, um, but yeah, they eat 70 to 100% of their weight in worms, grubs, and insects every day. So they eat their own body weight every single day and then dig all day. They'll dig uh, from 10 to like 20 hours a day. They'll just be digging. It's protein, though, isn't it? I know. Well, they just, and the thing is, they're going through the ground, they just eat as they go, they don't stop. <laughs> and they just, they do it, and then they literally stop, have these little naps, and they carry on. And I'm just like, but the thing is, you'll almost never see the buggers. That's why no one really knows how big that is. I've got like, mm. I'll tell you what, my genuine understanding of what a mole is and how they look, I'm pretty sure 90% of it is from the animals of Farthing Wood. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> And and honestly, right, that show has I've got more understanding of um, British wildlife from that show than I have probably any real thing, right? Um, so yeah, but yeah, moles, they're little buggers. Um, and there's one, there's one, uh, um, this one with a crazy like it's they've all got the little these little like um, I forgot what they're called. Oh, fuck up. Basically, their noses have all these little feelers on them because they're pretty blind. Yeah, that's, that's the, yeah. Uh, so one of them, there's this one particular one, which is, I think they call it something like a nose feeder or something, but it's like that particular species has got, it's bigger than its whole body, is like these massive nose feelers. And oh. it looks like out of the fucking, um, uh, oh, what is it? The bloody, uh, Not Last long. of Us, you know? Like, oh. You know, it's like, it looks like just this like, weird fungal growth out of its face, but that's just, you know, basically like living whiskers. Uh, but yeah, they just think of them like bats. They're like, ground bats. When Predator takes his mask off. Yes, <laughs> k- kind of. Except that they're, they eat worms and they're underground. Yeah. They're under the ground right now. They're beneath us right now. Although when, when he said they're compared to pigs, like, I want to try mole bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you do. <laughs> we'll get some mole <laughs> Get some mole <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> anyway. See. One one down. Crack on, son. Right. So this is why I'd say all oh, the two facts are a bit similar. It's because this is th- th- why why this is even needs to be mentioned is fucking ridiculous. Fucking stupid. I'm pissed off for you, mate. Really wound up. Go on, tell me. Biscuit facts, right? Biscuit facts. It's not a fucking biscuit. <laughs> not a fucking biscuit. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Straight away. Yeah, yes, immediately. Why? Because it's not a fucking biscuit. It's not a biscuit. But because I had the biscuit reference in it, that's why I thought I'd bring it up. Should we just say, say some some people might not know that if if you're not in the UK you might not know this because I think it is a very UK thing. Yeah, well Jaffa cakes. There you go. That's why it's not a biscuit. It's quite. A... <gasps> it's in the biscuit aisle, James. If oh. you go to Tesco's, it's in the biscuit aisle. If I want to go get Jaffa cakes, I'll go to where the digestive biscuits are, and they'll be next to them. Right, that's because the packaging is in. Right, the packaging is in. Fits. Oh, that packaging goes quite well with the biscuits. Lovely, lovely stuff. Oh, right, what if I accidentally put a fucking pack of tampons in a fucking biscuit aisle? Oh, I'm going to put these tampons and dunk it in my tea. You'd have no fucking tea left, would you? No. Why? Oh, but it's a Coke, it's a biscuit. No, it's in a biscuit aisle. It's got a fucking box. No, I'm sorry. It hasn't even got the name cake in its name. But Jaffa cakes have, because they're cakes. And it was, ugh. No. Dude, it's not. Like, I'm. A, I'm. I was just playing devil's advocate. Of course, they're cakes. Yeah, I'm I, completely I with you. They, they're sponge. They're sponge cake. We've had with, this discussion. Yeah, yeah no, of it. course they're sponge cake. They're, they're cake. If you dip biscuit, I mean, the thing is, you dip any of them into the. You take a hard thing, you put it in, it softens, right? Mm. But easy now, <laughs> easy. Okay, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to back you up here, right? Yeah. But a Jaffa cake turns to mush. It's not like a softening of a biscuit. Um, but biscuits have to be hard and crunchy. I think that's that's. They have to be, biscuit. Mm. And they're not. They never were. No. If you if you, if if you leave them out, and they go stale. They're approaching biscuit level. But they're still not biscuits. They're just stale cakes. And uh, I'm just... Mm. Now, they tried to... I think I can't remember the... You can tell us the reasoning. Because well, there was a tax reason, wasn't there? Well, I was going to get special guest of Mr McVitie's on just... But he, he just said, look, here's the link. So I, I've been speaking to a special guest, but yeah, I'm, he's not coming in today. 
So during there's a court battle between <laughs> McVitie's and... and Her Majesty's Customs and Excise. So McVitie's uh, baked a giant Jaffa cake to prove that Jaffa cakes were really cakes and not biscuits. It was um, it was a long and, mo- and costly dispute, but McVitie the the McVitie's family finally tasted sweet success and Jaffa cakes were finally recognised as chocolate covered cakes. So it's because of the whole sort of cake tax and all those sorts of things. It's um, that's so, why I want. Did it, there's a small. Is it less tax or no tax on cakes? I'm going to say yes to that because no, I, I, I know there was a huge saving in it. They were trying yeah. and they were like, you, you're, "You're fucking us with this. You need to pay more. T- you need to pay like with you know standard tax on this." I'll and take they're it, like, "No, yeah. it's a cake." And they're like, "Well, why is it a biscuit then, you fuck?" And they're like, "No, it's not a biscuit." Yeah. But um, no, I was. It's like you've never seen someone. <laughs> go to court against the country and everyone's like completely on their side they're like yeah no mate this was yeah. this was a, I think this was a thing when I was in school I remember this being a thing I remember just everyone getting quite irate about it and they're like oh, this is mental why are we even talking about this and then I, 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 I do remember people though who are very much of the mind they're like no it's a biscuit you treat it like a biscuit you put you put this is the thing people do treat them like biscuits mm-hmm. you know like you used to go around like your granny's house and she put out a little plate with yeah. biscuits all over it and she might do that with Jaffa cake she do it the same way so she is treating it like a biscuit and you might dip it in your tea you really S- might I cake. mean if you're a mentalist but yeah, I wouldn't. what you should I mean obviously what you should do is you should um, wow there's a few ways of going about it right I quite like I quite like um, oh. eating the, the, the sponge bit off first yep yeah. Go for that. And then, the, the cake bit, yeah? Not biscuit, yeah? Right, first of all, I'll tell you what I do first, right? Let me just talk you through, right? I peel off the bits of ch- chocolate off the orange bit, right? Yeah. So I get all the chocolate chunks off so that it's just exposed orange. Then I eat the, the, the sponge cake underneath, so I've just got a translucent orange disc, all right? And I slough that down. And that's that's how I eat a Jaffa cake. Now, everyone's got their own way, but that... Yeah. I've tried a few different ways, and I feel like that's the best way. I'm I'm similar to the extent, but what I would do Go is I will, I will peel off the um, the orange and the chocolate together. So I've got two bits. I've got the cake bit, and then the orange and the chocolate. Scoff down the the cake bit, and then if you fold and sort of roll the jelly bit, the <laughs> the, the chocolate peels off, and it's easier to consume. And then you expose the pure orange, and then one you can either just it's not so it just <laughs> yeah <that's laughs> just. It's, it's like <laughs> when you've got a big bowl of jelly and you put your mouth over and you go, <laughs> you like, <laughs> you eat and you like down in one that whole jelly. I did that. I did that in front of um, in front of my daughter like a little while ago, and she looked like to me like I was Jesus. I just walked on water. <laughs> like she, I went the jelly and I just like caned a whole bowl in like one slurp, and she's yeah. just like. <gasps> Holy fuck! She just, you know, she never normally says that. It was like it was really, it was really. She was oh. very impressed. What's the other ones I've done that with? Um, the the um the flans. I like sixty sixty four blanc. This is nice, man. I know. I know. I, right? I, I'm nice. That that and the whiskey. I'm quite nicely buzzed. It's very nice. Mm. That's why I thought as a gentleman needs to compliment the uh, the um thing. Oh, we're gonna have a little clinky. Apologies for now. Um, I'll do it between the mics so we don't um. Thank you. Tasteful, nice. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, so with the creme brulee fans, I've done the old inhale thing as well. Uh, lovely. And um, yeah, that's my my cake, non cake biscuit facts, non biscuit. Yeah, Jaffa cakes, fucking cakes, deal with it. The law says so. Yeah. Fuck you, HMRC. Yeah. Oh. That's why I'm gonna keep my my cakes under the bed. That's it, mate. <laughs> I ain't putting my fucking cakes in no fridge. The government can look at it with their, their cameras and drones. It's true, it's true. They do have those that side in vans. Yeah. With antenna poles and stuff. <laughs> Bastards. They're like, just eating cakes, you fucks. <laughs> All right. Cool, let's borrow me. Borrowing animals, big and small animals. Talk about the noble badger. Yes. Badger. Badger. Badger of puppets. Um, <laughs> Metallica's wild. Like, <laughs> Badger of puppets, you're going to wear. Oh, whatever noise that makes. <laughs> Under the ground. Um, <laughs> the name Badger comes from the French word Bichir, which means digger, which is their word. So you shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> the standard European badger weighs up to 15 kilos or 30 pounds, can be found in either a, a set or colony of clans with 4 to 20 sleeping on the. Uh, oh, no, so it can be found in either a set or a colony. They, um, and they a group of them is a, a clan 
uh, four to twenty generally, and they either live there or they uh, sleep on the side of country roads. That's where they tend to find them. Are they actually sleeping at the side of country roads, or have they just been dinged? They're sleeping. They sleep on. They like to sleep on the side of roads. Okay. I've been seen dead badgers at the side of the road. No, they're not sleeping. no, they're, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Okay. They're, they like to sleep on the side of country roads. Okay. They're really fast ones. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I only see dead badgers. I'm really, it bums me out because I never, I never see them alive. I think I did once. <clears throat> so I think I saw one snuffling away when I lived in Eccles, just sort of like in the country. I was like walking the dog late, and I was like, oh, and this badger goes, oh, fuck, 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 it's running away. But they're so shy, so you'd never see them unless they're dead. It was really like a bummer. Well, I I done this on the way back from a gig once. Um, I was driving, going down towards the, dropping off. What was the? What was they? Dropping off a bird. <coughs> okay, and um, and I hit a badger. And my mate was like, "Huh? What have you just hit? You just hit a cone." So, like, no, I just, just hit a badger. No, you hit a cone. So, oh. so I had to go around around, but turn back and found this badger. And it was there. It was on the floor. It was still alive. Everyone was upset in the car. So Katie, we had one of them because Katie got changed for the gig. Should have worked up in the in the boot of the car. We picked up the badger. We never worked up. Put it to the side of the road. And we just watched it. So, mm. I suppose fucking horrible. And then what happens? Her dad's. Uh, the very next day, her dad would send us emails of a little baby badger going, "Have you seen my mummy?" <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one, I felt like an arse doing it in the first place. And then that happened. He just wind us up, proper wind up merchant. Classic. He done done really really well. But um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh god. Um, sleeping badgers, yeah. Sleeping badgers, sad, sad badgers. Um, the American badger, because that's the European badger, the one we're used to, the one with the right stripes, right? Mm. The American badger is Fresh like a, like an inverse version of that, right? So the black and the white are swapped over. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh. Um, Dan's Dan's going to show me a picture because I'm curious, but then you can look it up yourself um, just to, for contents, context. Yeah, just... Uh, but, they're, yeah, they're just like... They're very similar, but they've got like this... Oh, I don't know. That... Yeah, I don't know. That... <laughs> I don't know. They should do something about that. But, yeah, they're just like... Because we have the three-stripe and they basically have like a five-stripe. We've got the fucking Adidas and they got like the fucking... This is the knockoff, isn't it? Deodora, no, no, no yeah. yeah. Other, other brands of available. Kappa, was Kappa for? No, Kappa has two people back to back. Yeah, that was it. What was the, oh, one of them was like? Anyway, this is this is the off brand High Street version of a. Uh, but they are. Does, no. Yeah. Now they're smaller. They are smaller than ours. Ours are 15 kilos, theirs are about like 8 to 9. So they are smaller than ours, right? Um, but the thing that's different, the main difference, right? They have this big chip on their shoulder, so they're a bit more aggressive because they are. The British badger has no predators. They, uh, they occasionally like a baby badger, like a little. Um, I think. Oh, fuck! What do they call them? Calf, whatever. They're, but the the baby one, they get picked off by like maybe a fox will get them right. But there's mm. no fox in the world. There's no dog. No one's fucking with an adult badger. No. Now, technically, technically, this dog you see here right now is a dashwind, which is means badger dog. Hmm. So they were bred literally to go down into badger holes and pull out badgers. Now, you can't see this little pig, <laughs> pygmy idiot right now, but there's just no universe where he's doing one over on a badger. <laughs> badger would jack you up some, right? Um, he's on his back right now, looking like a right little bitch. So there's just no way. Nice guy, but yeah, doing a badger. Anyway, um, so... Yeah, so the American badger, they are in a very different ecosystem and they have loads of like coyotes and like eagles and all kinds of shit and they're smaller, so they just get fucked off by everyone. So they're super aggro because they have to be. They just they just built a different way. Whereas our guy over here, they just are super antisocial. They just they stick with their, their kind, they don't hang around, they don't let anyone see them. That's why even though they're pretty numerous in this country, you never really see them because they're just like They've got good hearing, good sense of smell, and they don't let humans get close. That's generally their move. Um, but yeah, they that's, everyone wants to eat the American badger. Um, now, the honey badger. Hmm, massive balls. <laughs> the honey badger is basically like the psychotic cousin of yeah. the other badgers, right? 
it, it, it's, it's basically Begbie from Train Spotting <laughs> if he, if Begbie lived in a hole, right? So it, it's one of the smaller badgers in the family, but they're well stockier, stronger. They're not very fast. Most badgers are actually really fast, uh, but the honey badgers aren't. But they're they're super like stocky and strong, um, and they've got enough jaw strength to bite through a tortoise's shell. Yeah, Damn. right. Okay, and that's not a rare thing to happen. They fuck things up, right? Um, but they are famously really famous for starting fights with animals bigger than them. If you go online and, and like search for honey badger versus, you will see some really really messed up things, right? Because they will start. They will have a go at anything, right? They literally, if they're if they're out and about and they see something, they'll have a crack. They're like, "Well, he's either going to eat me, or I'm going to eat him." So let's have a go. So they're, they're, I've, there's videos of them uh, trying it on with leopards, with like tigers and shit. They don't give a fuck, mate. Yeah. Um, there's, um, oh, hang on a sec. If you literally just go, oh, whoa! <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Just ignore that. Um, <laughs> it could have been way worse. Um, <laughs> It's <laughs> That's my <laughs> Honey badger versus, right? Look. Oh, wow. Okay. The list is lion, <laughs> snake, leopard, cobra, hyena, wolverine, python, crocodile, komodo dragon, right? They do not fuck around. And every single one, right? Like, there's them fighting lions. And the thing is, it's, it's one honey badger that takes on six lions. <laughs> they are fucking mentalists. That's an opponent complex. To- yeah. And they're, just, they're just like they, yeah, but they like. I think it's they're so super aggressive. There's so much testosterone. They'll just have a crack. Look, look, and he's like, no one's pissing around because they got this crazy jaw. Like it's all well and good if you're a lion. You're like, I can mash him up. It's like if he gets your paw or something in his mouth, you are fucked. They will bite through it, and they know it. Damn. So that, look, look. So you can't I'm... see this, but there's a lion running away from Honey Badger because, and he's with all his mates as well. There's all the other lions. They're like, nah, 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 mate, nah, nah. That guy's psycho. It's like he's the, like the Karen of the. Uh, the... Oh wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and they can stand their back legs. Oh, okay. Because they, yeah. they make themselves big, and they just stand up on their back legs. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you want some? <laughs> Basically, if the Scousers were a fucking little, little burrowing mammal. Um, so, yeah. But, hey, you calm down, it's my hole. Yeah, my hole. <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, um, they don't fucking honey badgers. But, yeah, badgers as a whole, they're hard bastards. Like, badgers quite regularly. Like, if, if like, a dog goes for a badger or something, they will mash up a dog. They won't finish him off or anything, but they no. will defend themselves quite aggressively. They got really, they're quite powerful for their size. Because uh, they dig, and they just, you know... But that's their word, so don't start. Hmm. Um, I'm going to pause ever so slightly. Do you like beefcake, boy? Yeah. Do you like burgers? Yeah. You never have burgers, this big boy. A six-foot-long burger. <laughs> Dripping with cheese, your legs be covered in the cheese, boy. Oh, yeah. Dripping down in your socks. <laughs> Biscuits bigger than your mama's ass. All oh, down the old big biscuit bucket bar down in Chatham. Yeah! Yummy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, badges are done. It's on to you, sir. Okay, so. Biscuits. Mm. You can make beer with biscuits. Hmm. The earliest biscuits were not made to be eaten. The ancient Sumerians dried slices of barley bread into hard, dry rusks to store the malted barley they needed for brewing. To make beer, all they had to do was soak the rusks in warm water and make a mash, sweeten it with honey or date juice and leave it to ferment. I want to make that. I want, oh, I want that, to that sounds awesome. That's awesome. So you just literally chuck a biscuit with a bit of honey and mash it up and just leave it. Basically, so from what I'm seeing, that yeah, basically. <laughs> well. yeah, basically, um, make some shit go stale, mm. and then, uh, yeah, it's like, um, like I was telling you earlier about the whole prison, prison hooch and stuff, it's like all the um, fermented random stuff, just like yeah. the early version of that. I'll give it a go, it'll most probably taste shit when I make it, but I'll make it good after seven or eight attempts. Mm. Put in some citrus, put in some lemon. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong. Uh, yeah. The sponsor's back at the door. 
Sponsored by Stanry. He's a small dog, a tiny brain. He's scratching and he's completely insane. He's got triangle ears like a twat. And he's no bigger than a cat. Come on, doggy, get out of the way. You're a Stanley and a bit of a gang. <coughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, um. That's my miniature biscuit fact. Miniature biscuit fact. Mini biscuit fact. I'm back to. Um, Alright, so now I've got. This is kind of a omni fact. Ooh. What I've done is. Now, borrowing animals, there's quite a lot of birds that borrow. Not quite a lot, but there's some. So what I've done a birds fact. And I've got, so I'm going to go through each one a little with a little bit of just a quick little, you know, birds. Yeah. First one, kingfishers. Now, I didn't know they borrowed, but um, so they're, yeah, so they're, they're quite interesting. Um, they're borrowing birds, apparently. They don't always live in burrows. They tend to live in lots of different places, but they've been known to borrow. Uh, they fly 25 miles an hour, uh, just, just like a few centimetres above the water. And they watch fish and they, they dive and they eat fish, right? They live up to 15 years, which is really long uh, for, for species like for birds in the British wildlife. Um, but they're famously unhygienic. Um, they're really like, apparently wherever there's like, they have like these little burrows or these, they have nests as well. But they tend to like have all the different places. But wherever they are, they eat, they eat and they just leave their shit all right around. So they have like um, this really... If you're near somewhere where kingfishers live, it stinks of rotting flesh all the time because they yeah. have like they catch fish, take them back there, and just leave like rotting chunks of fish and bones and shit around their their their, mm. their nests or where their sets or wherever they happen to be. Um, so they learn to fly really young, like for, even for birds, they, they so they learn to fly really young. Uh, but their hunting requires them to fly, fly closely over the water and grab fish. So a huge majority, not majority, but a huge, I think I think it's like more than half, but like a fuckload of them. Apparently, because they <laughs> they have to dive in the water and get out again, and that's the hardest part. And because there's no there's no wiggle room on that, right? If you don't get your, you might not catch the fish you're going for, right? If you if you can't work out how to get out of the water, yeah. you just drown. <laughs> so loads of them drown. Their their first time they go hunting, all the little baby ones, about half of them fucking die because they can't. Because it's re like the, the, me the mechanism by which they hunt is so complicated. I just thought it interesting and kind of sad. Yeah, I was gonna say I feel um, quite quite but, sad now. Yeah, but yeah, they, so they 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 learn to swim. That comes later, but they learn to dive and hunt first, and then they can swim in water when they're a bit bigger. But apparently, I think like the feathers for that, that, that necessitate that come in later, so they they're not buoyant enough because of the, the you know, size of them. So yeah, it's just a kind of a like an evolutionary fuck up, but. Evidently, the ones that are really savvy survive. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, that's kingfishers. Uh, Magellanic penguins. Magellanic penguins are a type of. Uh, they're in South America, I think. Yeah, Argentinian coast, uh, southern Chile, and the beautiful British Falkland Isles. Oh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so they uh, they yeah they, they, they live there on the coastland. They always lay two eggs in shallow burrows. They have they dig out little burrows with their beaks. And they, they, yeah, they, they just, they like to live in these little burrows because they're on the coastline. They're far away. There's no uh, like plants and shit to live in. There's no trees. There's no, you know, obviously in like Antarctica shit, they just stand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the fuck else? Stopped? But they, you know, like they've got, um, they just to get away from the elements and stuff. They, they have these little burrows and yeah, they, they go in there. Obviously like all, like all the, um, all the penguins they make for life. And they'll have a thing, and every uh, season, every mating season, they have two eggs in a shallow burrow. Um, and what else? Yeah, that's it for them. Fuck them. The penguins are nice. Just but, like to say, go on. I found that very interesting because I fucking love penguins. Penguins are one of my favourite animals, and I love them so much that when I worked at a toy shop, a very famous one, which is no longer Toys R Us, I had happy feet on loop the whole time. I learned all the songs. I tried learning all the dances. If not, it's just some bat supervisor in a shirt tap dancing in front of a television. It's uh, yeah. But I, I was well chuffed. I can love that film. Love penguins. You're all. Thank you. They live in holes. I know, right? They live in holes. And also really good singers and dancers. Apparently, so I didn't know that. Very interesting. <laughs> so that didn't that didn't come up with my facts. Sorry. Uh, puffins. Puffins. They fly uh, really, really fast because they don't look fast. 
But considering the think kingfishers, which are known for their speed, right? Hmm. Mainly they hover, but they they're known for their speed as well. They fly twenty five miles an hour. Puffins fly fifty five miles an hour. Okay. They live primarily at sea. Like they'll go out to sea and come back months later. Um, <laughs> but I was like, what? Do, what do, where do they sleep and shit? They sleep on the water. They just float on the water and just sleep up there, right? Um, they dive. They do this speed dive thing. They can dive for up to a minute under the water, but because they swim so fucking fast. They go up down, uh, as low as 300 feet below the water. What level? They go 300 feet down in a minute. Uh, get a fish, come back up again, because they're crazy fast finners. They are. Um, they have this weird obsession with sand eels or sand lance. And apparently, like they'll like if they catch a fish, they'll abandon it because they're like, oh shit, sand eel. They're like they'll literally. <laughs> they just like it's like they crack. They just love it, right? So they've been known to abandon whatever food they're hunting if they think there's a chance of getting a sand eel. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, Kias. Now, Kias, I, I fucking love Kias. I, I met, I saw, I saw some Kias in a zoo in New Zealand. No, New Zealand. Um, in, um, in, in Cornwall, and they're from New Zealand. They, they, they the species, they're large parrot. They live in New Zealand. They, they um, evolved there. Now they're really crazy, crazy smart. Yeah, you see them, right? Oh, uh, the... they're quite big. They're yeah. decent size. Uh, now, basically, because they live there and there's no predators in New Zealand, there's none there, right? So they never had to live in trees and protect them because they, nothing was hunting them. So they burrow in the roots of trees. They live in these little holes under the roots of trees. So when people went over there, uh, they brought cats with them. And cats nearly wiped them out. Man. <laughs> They're really, really smart. Like, I was I, I was playing with them at the zoo. Um, I think it was the... What was it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. But it was in it was in there in Cornwall, <coughs> and um, they they had a zoo there, and I I was like giving them little sticks and stuff, and they were using the stick to dig holes and stuff, and they were talk they could see them like nattering amongst each other and like communicating, mm. and they were passing the stick around, and they come back, and then they gave me a, a stone for the stick, like a, it was like a, <laughs> a bar, like it was oh he gave us a stick, so let's give him a stone, otherwise <laughs> it's not, and I was just like this is crazy, they they really seem to like, um, they weigh over the adults adult males weigh over a kilo. Um, but they're considered um, a real hazard by New Zealand residents because they basically they almost got wiped out and then they built this giant area where they basically have like this fence around so that cats aren't supposed to get in. Obviously cats can get a fucking deal, but it's like they yeah. specifically are trying to keep them preserved um, and they've come back quite quite strong. They've also, because they're quite smart, they, they've, they're not quite as... Um, they don't always necessarily live like low down because they can fly, but... Um, but yeah, they they regularly damage cars. So they like to fuck around with cars. They love wipers. <laughs> this is actually like a known thing. Like if you have a car and there's lots of Kias around, they get on your car and they'll fuck with your wipers. It's like a known thing. Um, so, but they're friend famously friendly and but mischievous. They'll hide things and and fuck with you and they they but they they'll, they'll hang around. They're very friendly around humans, and they just I just they're just fucking sweet. So that's my um, borrowing birds. Facts. Facts. How, so if they're mischievous, would would they attack like the Kia seed or that car? They might, especially. Or maybe they leave it alone. Yeah, he's one of us guys. Leave alone. <laughs> he might look a bit different, but fuck it, he's still a Kia. He's still a Kia. He's one of us. <laughs> oh. Biscuits. Biscuits. The first British biscuit was a breath freshener. Mm. The first biscuit recipe come from uh, Britain. In an Italian alchemy come medical, um, an Italian alchemy come medical handbook, the biscuits were hard sponge fingers flavored with musk or aniseed and eaten at the end of a meal to sweeten the breath and suppress the vapors rising from the stomach. I hate aniseed. That stuff's <laughs> fucking disgusting. It grew on me. I, I used to not like it. That's aniseed balls. Don't, my brother used to eat them like fucking tablets. Honestly, that, I, I, he strikes me the type. I can I can see it. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. seems like the type to do that. But I, yeah, I, I didn't like them when I was younger. I, I remember thinking like, what the f-? like there's certain things I didn't I didn't understand that I didn't understand, you know, um, you know, like short sorts. No, they can still do one. Yeah, like so like licorice, licorice. I'm like I could not work it out, and I remember having licorice years later. I was like, maybe, like I just was like, there's there's something here. But when I was younger, no, aniseed and licorice could do one. I wasn't, I wasn't, couldn't understand it. Did you ever have that licorice which looked like twigs? 
They look like bits of wood. Proper licorice. Like yeah. Proper, yeah, yeah. If, it's like a weird sort of texture. It's like really kind of gummy. Well, my mum used to eat them all the time. Again, it, it's like you literally, tr- you, you got into a branch, you rip something off, you chew it on a fucking stick. That's all it looked like. And she used to have that all the time. It's like, one, it stinks of licorice, can't stand it. Two, it just looks wrong. Mm. And, yeah, no, no, I don't. Licorice is wrong on so many levels. It's not a biscuit, so, you know, fuck you, licorice, right now. But, um. But licorice biscuits were. To, I think it's digestive though, isn't it? It's supposed to be a good digestive. It's supposed to help with that. So maybe they did work. Might have done, but I'm not going to find out. But yeah, after they did a mince, don't you? So there's something to it. Mm. Oh, do we have after dinner mince? I would like it if after dinner mince was like you've had your dinner, have a fucking shepherd's pie after dinner mince. <laughs> 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 I'm like, I'm like delicious. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm all full up. Oh, my breath stinks a bit. Have some shepherd's pie, mate. Yeah, but like, is it, is it is it literally just a smelly thing? Like, a, just a, we give you after dinner, you know, like you have your, bring out like a tray of after dinner mints or whatever after your meal. Is it just to freshen your breath? Well, from from what the, the fact that I was reading, is basically, yeah, just to, just to suppress the, the breath. And because it's it's the mint that goes down, you have it as like in a biscuit form. And it goes into your stomach, which is supposed to take away the odour from your actual stomach itself. Oh, okay. So it's to stop sort of... what you've got and stop what's about to come up. So yeah. it's just for breeze for your guts. <laughs> for biscuit breeze, yeah. For, for, for... They should make a biscuit. I need for breeze biscuits. I'm like, wow, you're... <laughs> no. you're like you're like your breath smells like CK one. It was amazing. Mm, mm. I think the summer's coming out now. Why? Because I can smell summer. No, that's my for brisket breath. <laughs> for brisket breath. <laughs> oh dear. That no. should be. I, I'd quite like to. Um, if you could make all your different, like, okay, my burps now smell of like caramel, and and like you know, my yeah. fart smell of um, I don't know, like um, I don't know, leather and and what's what's the good? Oak wood. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Some sort of some sort of wood. Amber and oak. <laughs> yeah, just like just. Mm, you smell like a man. <laughs> like I did just fart. Yeah, that's like I did just drop one. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, yeah. My <laughs> like cum smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, your house smells nice. Like, yeah, I'm just spaffed. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> oh dear. Just pissing my sandalwood piss up the wall. It's like, yeah. Oh, alleyways on the way to the yeah, like, Oh, it smells nice around it. Oh, yeah. It's class like... up the space. Class and all up the walls. Oh, oh God. Dear. All right. Um, anyway, are you all biscuit in Yeah, that, that's my... All right. I've got, yeah. Um, rabbits. Now, rabbits. Interesting facts about rabbits. Now, you know most things about rabbits, right? Yeah, ears, feet, legs, carrot. Like to jump. Um... Famously, you know, farmers don't like them. And they nip. Nip a lot. A rabbit will blink as little as 12 times an hour. It's not much, is it? That's no. once every five minutes. Do you know why? No. I'll give you a clue. It's similar to a camel. Save water? You can't remember your camel facts, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think cows, was a humps... Um... They have a third eyelid. Oh! Now, thanks to their third eyelid, not only do they blink infrequently, they can also sleep without closing their eyes. Oh, we... <laughs> <laughs> I remember that fact. It doesn't want to close your eyes to sleep. Fucking not right. Sorry. Sorry. Never name her. <laughs> Just say the friend of ours. Sorry, sorry. I... I, I... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. The friend of ours who isn't called what? <laughs> Remind me, and I'll try and beef it. Okay. If I don't, I'm sorry. I tried. <laughs> but what the fuck was that? Sorry, sorry. Oh, oh no! I kind of love it. I kind of love it. <laughs> oh. Should we just go back um, with the beep now? <laughs> now, I got one more little factet about bunnies that may make you feel some a certain way, right? Factet. Now. Rabbits are they, they so the, the rabbits are wired as prey, right? But they can be super aggressive. But when a rabbit is caught, they have this. Um, oh, what the fuck is it? They have basically lots of hormonal release, where they basically go into this euphoric state of just like they because they designed because they're they they all live together, right? A warren. So if a rabbit gets caught by a fox, say, they just submit. They just 
go limp. They just take it. They're like, oh, okay. And I, I remember, I always remember driving home once really late, and I was when I lived in the Strand, I was just watched a fox crossing at the crossing, holding a rabbit by the, by the scruff. And rabbit was just like, just hanging there like, okay. And they and then it took it back into the bushes, and I was like, oh, you know, just bummed bum me out. But the rabbit wasn't trying to get away or anything. It was just like, it wasn't dead. It was it was looking around, but it was just like being carried away into the bushes by a fox. That's, that's sad. And you're like, but they, they have this thing, literally, they're just, they are wired, they just go into this, this state where they're just like, oh, that's okay. And they, but obviously they're wired that way evolutionarily because um, if they do that, it will protect the, the group, the, you know, the, the, the pack or whatever. The, I can't remember what the group of bunnies is called. The Warren, or you know, but... A flock. Oh, yes, a flock of bunnies. <laughs> a flock of rabbits. Uh, and, yeah, so they, they, they all live together and if one of them gets caught, they're basically, I'll, I'll, I'll take one for the team. And that's what they do. So, you know, they're, they're good good chaps, good eggs. That wasn't actually, that, my fact, that was something I'd read, but, um, but you know rabbits, when you stroke them, you ever notice that they purr? No. They do. I've noticed it. My bunnies purr sometimes. They can grunt, right? But they don't have uh, traditional vocal cords. So the grunting is literally just like, uh, they're pushing air out, right? <laughs> now, they can't purr in the same way a cat can purr. A cat purrs because it literally has, like, they have... A nest and a colony. A colony. It's a colony or a nest. There you go. Yeah. So a colony of rabbits, um, and they'll take one for the colony. They're like, for the colony, they're basically communists. That's basically <laughs> what rabbits are, right? Um, so, but, you know, real communists, not like Russians. Proper communists. Um, but, yeah, so they they can grunt, but they literally is like an escaping of gas, right? They just literally like, but like this, like, Ugh! you know, like if you pushed on someone's, like, chest and they breathed out really fast, that's their grunting. But like they can't like it's like if a rabbit gets attacked, they don't scream or anything. They can't. They don't have vocal cords. They can't. They can't. They can't throw up. They don't have that reflex. They can't. They can't do that. That's why they're really easy to poison because they literally once they've eaten, it's you fucked. That's it. But they do purr. Now the purring. This was something I didn't know. So they now know the purring is what rabbits do when they're really content. When they're really content, they grind their teeth together. <laughs> Ooh. And that is the sound you're hearing. The purring sound they make is them grinding their teeth because they're happy. Oh no. But they're happy. And they have to grind their teeth because their teeth never stop growing. Their teeth grow their entire lives. They don't grind them down or chew them down. They, they literally grow through their brains. That sounds horrible. Well, yes, yeah, teeth grow through your brain. Mm. So you know it's going to be slow and painful. And it's through your brain, so fatal. Mm. so they grind them but if they're like super stressed all the time they don't grind them as much they don't eat as, if they don't eat enough or they don't eat enough hard stuff they can um, yeah be in a bad way but yeah so interesting mm. is that why you often see rabbits on grinder? you're looking in the wrong place mate <laughs> yeah yeah but that was good thank you I'll give you that okay bunny facts bunny facts um, bunny facts Right, biscuits. Biscuits. Biscuits were originally made to be dunked in wine. Seventeenth hmm. century gentlefolk. Dunk- You've had like three facts that have all started with biscuits were originally meant for this, 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 and this. That's because biscuits are multi-purpose. Ah uh, yes, the universal food. But they're not been made to have layers of orange on top of them um, with chocolate either, because they're not fucking cakes. So. Biscuits were originally made to be dunked in wine. Seventeenth century Jesuit wine. <laughs> if you're in the know, you know what that's all about. I'm just saying. Biscuit and wine. Seventeenth uh, century Jesuit folk dunked their hard sponge fingers in sweet wine served at the end of a meal. This is why sponge fingers are long de chat and biscotti. Long de chat is a cat's tongues. Mm, French, yeah. And biscotti, Italian, in it, um, are long and thin. So they could fit into narrow glasses. Guests would be given special toasting biscuits, which had patriotic symbols such as coats of arms printed on them to dunk in their wines before toasting the Prince of Wales or Duchess of York. There you go. Re- and just regal, regal facts. And then the biscuits, they got coats of arms on them. They're like lions and... I didn't know they were so special. No. So... Special, special, special. cuts of bombs, biscuits are special. Special. If you got some cat tongues, are special. Special. And biscotti is Italian special. Special. 
episode number 12 sponsored by Biscuits of the Special. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm sorry. I'll... You do what you have to do. Yeah. I'm proud of you. That's my, that's my bisque fact. Bisque fact. I've got one more fact left and I've got um, a quiz fact and I have eight quiz questions. I've got quite a few still. I, I kind of went... I have I have got backup things if need to. So. All right, no, I, I got quite a lot. I'm going to just keep powering through. Um, I'll do a couple and then you can do one and then I'll do a couple more and we'll see how it goes, okay? Cool. Um, burrowing animal, animals. I'm going for the big one now. Oh. Bears. <gasps> they burrow. In caves? They No, they live in caves sometimes, but they also burrow. They build sets in the same way badgers do. Um... They dig big holes. Yeah. They dig fuck off holes. They do. Um, so, bears. A adult grizzly has a biting force of over 1,200 psi, which is enough to crush a bowling ball or bite through an iron skillet. All right? So you're fucked. Um, they can run up to 40 miles an hour, which is 15 miles an hour less than a puffin can fly. <laughs> uh, but it's as fast as a greyhound, right? So you see a greyhound run down a track, that's a bear. You're so fucked. Yeah, no, I, I don't like I've that. never heard that put in that context. I knew they could run fast, but like, same speed as a greyhound, you're like, oh, no, I'm, no, I'm done. Because they're, yeah, I'll get some more facts and then you realise like, um, um, now polar bears, right? Biggest of all species. They can weigh between 900, 1500 pounds. I mean, I just, I can't even look my head around that. That's so big. Um, and so when they stand up, like 1,500 pound one, basically if you're a small polar bear, you're six foot tall, right? <laughs> but they grow up to 10 foot tall. So stand on the back legs, right? So 1,500 pounds, 10 foot tall, and they can run as fast as a greyhound, right? So fucked. Um, yeah, bears, bears are like the ultimate apex predator because they can swim faster than you. They can climb faster than you. They can run faster than you. They're harder than you. There's literally no, there's no way <laughs> If you take guns out, guns and bows and arrows out of the equation, right? There's nothing you can do to fuck up a bear. They, 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 they ace humans in every single way. Like in um, the old European cave bears, because we used to have bears all over Europe, right? So we, they, they, the, the cave bears were even bigger than polar bears are now. <laughs> and they used to live around here, and they just found these old cave bears, and they just like had their old, they found their old like uh, caves they used to live in, obviously. That's why I think we associate cave, bears with caves. They don't tend to live in caves that much um, because there's not just loads of caves where bears are, you know. They might live in an area where there aren't any caves. <laughs> they still have to live somewhere, so they dig a little hole. <laughs> they dig a little hole. Um, but they got big dig, diggy hands. But they also they eat a lot of veggies and shit. They, uh, no, sorry, insects and things. So they, they'll dig under like logs and stuff and they like to eat like grubs and shit. And, you know, people. Yeah, standard. <laughs> standard. Uh, but, yeah, bears... <clears throat> Oh yeah, so oh, that's bears. I'll get to the next one. I'll get I'll get a few done. Um, bears. Now, burrowing animals. I know what you're thinking. Yeah. Owls. Of course. Burrowing owls. These owls, um, they they just standard owls. They hunt by swooping down perches and surprising prey. Uh, they're quite small owls. Um, they also like to they they can silently hover over open areas running along the ground and they see animals chasing and they dive down. So they're really really known for how quiet they are. But then I suppose all owls are to some extent. Um, who? All owls are to some extent. These are burrowing owls. Oh, oh, oh. poop. <laughs> Mate, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm in serious mode. I'm, sorry, sorry. Uh, but yeah, they, they have been known to, uh, they burrow and they build these little underground holes and they, they grow, they have their young in um, in little burrows. And uh, they, uh, now the, oh yeah, so this is nothing. So they like to collect mammal dung and they put it around the burrow, right? Because they're also known to eat a lot of insects, right? So they put bung around the burrow. Uh, bung, 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 bung around the dung. Dung around the burrow. <laughs> Jesus. <I'm afraid. laughs> Two beers in, guys. Uh, and other whiskey. Um, but the animal waste attracts dung beetles and other insects, which the owl will then duck out of the burrow and just go, oh, and eat them. <laughs> so that's their, like, that's their takeaway. They just, like, literally get loads of animal shit, put it around there, and then they eat the animals that come to eat the shit. Um, because they're nasty. Oh, so, so nasty. Yeah. Um, all right, you got one more. Go on, do you one more? Because I've got, uh, I've got two and a silly thing. Uh, so you go. Uh, you can make people. I've done that one. Biscuits are original. Yep, yep. 
Oh, oh, I've got, I've got two facts. <clears throat> Digestive biscuits were invented to cure the epidemic of flatulence. <laughs> In the 19th century, newspapers are were to believe the Victorian gentleman, Meg. <laughs> If the 19th century's newspapers are to be believed, Victorian gentlemen were martyrs. Sorry, so I, I forgot that uh, we've got a child. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, you wait till your next fact. Honestly, I'm going to be doing... <laughs> especially guess a couple... I, I can hear him knocking on the door, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> If 19th century newspapers are to be believed, Victorian gentlemen, the g- gentlemen were martyrs to an like, epidemic of flatulence. McVitie's is great. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bubble in my throat. <coughs> oh. McVitie's is credited with having invented the digestive biscuit as a remedy for their disorders, the disordered stomachs. In fact, the idea that biscuits would cure windy colonic was nothing new. In the 15th century, caraway biscuits were eaten to comfort the stomach. In 1892, McVitie's added baking powder, fought to guard against indigestion, and sweet meal biscuits. So, the sweet meal biscuits. Okay. Yeah, so digestives, stop it. So, is it still in there? They still have that in there, or is it just... Because they added it and take it away. I don't know, I think it's added to, so I can't see that's taken away, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't look that bit up because I thought we would have presumed that they've added it, not going to take away. Yeah. Tastes nice then, fuck it, keep it. That's a secret ingredient. Baking powder? <clears throat> well, I like digestive biscuits, I don't care what they say. we done a bit of shopping today. And so chocolate digestives? I do. Yeah, it's all dark chocolate, normal chocolate... White chocolate digestive biscuits. No, nope. never had them before. No, nope. no, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, fuck it, I need to try them, mate. They're lish delish. They're nice. Mm. They're very good. They're very good. It's wrong. It's wrong. Absolutely wrong. You're crossing even, the streams, mate. It's not right. The quality of the chocolate. So you're, you look at chocolate digestive, right? You go, oh, fuck me, that's pretty. It's like a wave of chocolate that's been caressing the ocean, with the, the, the shores, and to cause ripples. And you, you look at it in a poetic way. Your eyes look at it, and it's like it's reading a book of poetry with chocolate. Synonyms. You've never been this eloquent and, yeah. and into anything you've yeah. ever said. Yeah. You're like, I like biscuits upside down. And then you're like, <laughs> is it true? Like, what did you even just say? That was beautiful. Yeah, no, right. You just like poetry all over my face, neck, and chest. <laughs> that was I'm like wiping it out of my eyes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Smells nice, though, doesn't it? And I got a chub. I don't even know how you did that. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right, no, sorry. Carry on. Oh, yeah, anyway, white, white chocolate digest is actually quite nice. I was, yeah, and the, the white chocolate, right, on top of it, mate, it's not even fully covered. It was like, honestly, someone thought, fuck it, let's put some white chocolate on it. Second before, nah, let's not put it on properly. We'll spread it out over more packages, make more money. It looks shit, but actually, it's nice. It's nice. I'd, I'd uh, yeah, I'd say, try, try it. Try it. Good. Good. Try it good. Try it good. And think of... Did you get the slogans? Try it. Good. Okay. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Mavitis, try it good. Try it good. Um, I might give it a go. I, I still think it's wrong. Wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bring it back. Um, fucking meerkats, mate. Oh, that's easy. That's uh, simple as air. It is. Or is there something more going on there? Mm-hmm. Did you know meerkats are immune to venom? <laughs> no. Okay. I thought I did, but I'm thinking. So they, basically, it's been described that, that they uh, they frequently they attack snakes. So they're specifically um, immune to snake venom, as they're part of the mongoose family. They tend to they have they all have a certain amount of uh, resistance to it. In some parts of the world, people prize mongooses um, as as house guards because they can battle deadly snakes like cobras. They have them as pets to to. That's what I was. That's what I was yeah. thinking of mon- mongoose. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they keep the, they keep monkeys on their on the, the grounds to fight snakes. Stop snakes getting them because they will battle deadly snakes like cobras, and they tend to go for them as well. They like they don't like oh I'll, you know, they'll actively go after them. So if bitten, they do feel unwell for several hours, but make a full recovery. So they just they take it. They're like, oh, I feel a bit iffy. What did you get? I got bitten by a cobra, 
just to have got a bit, a bit of a funny headache. I'll be better in an hour or two. <laughs> I've been bitten by the cobra. Don't worry, you'll have the shits for half an hour, but that's it. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Crack on. Crack on, son. Um, oh, they've developed a technique of handing the venom uh, found in scorpions as well, right? Which they eat regularly. They, they actively go after scorpions. All right? So a scorpion sees a meerkat, it moves in quickly for the kill because a scorpion's thinking, ah, an easy little badgery thing, piece of piss, right? Scorpion may be aware of a meerkat, it's close by, but it grabs the arachnid so fast, they're so fast that it can't attack, right? First thing the meerkat does is it goes in, bites off the scorpion stinger, bites it off, and just chucks it. <laughs> Savage. Without the tail, the scorpion can't strike any venom. The pincers might cause a nasty nip, but that's it, right? But they're so fast, it doesn't really matter too much. They'll, they'll, they'll have them, right? Um, there is still venom in the exoskeleton, but to combat this, meerkats have learned to rub scorpions on the sand to remove any remaining venom. <laughs> now, do they rub one out then? They do rub one out, <laughs> and then they yum it down. Oh. Um, <laughs> I've seen that film. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> <laughs> um, now, desert is dry, right? They live in deserts. Deserts are dry. Meerkats do not drink water. They right. never they go after water, they don't drink it, right? So they live in unbelievably hot air environments, right? They don't need extra water in their diets. So they get all the moisture they need from the insects and the grubs they eat exclusively. So in an environment where a human would die in three to five days, they will happily live comfortably on just insects and grubs and shit. They're just hard bastards. Yeah. And they live in burrows. So, you know, it counts. Right. Right. Are you all factored out? I've got one more fact, then I've got little quizzy bits. Oh, quizzies? Yeah. All right, go on. I've got a fact and a silly thing. So. Right, so, fact. Fact. The Second World War mm. made biscuits and tea into, hap- into a happy couple. Sweet tea was the drink of choice for Britain's work and working classes. But during the Second World War, tea and sugar were rationed. Uh, many complained that the wartime tea was never sweet enough. And so... Biscuit manufacturers stepped in by supplying auxiliary services, um, canteens, so that firelighters, uh, sorry, firefighters, ambulance drivers, and bombed out civilians could get their sugar fix alongside um, rather than in their tea. Um, yeah, so basically they'll they have, they have the tea, the, the biscuit companies are like, ah, fuck it, we'll step up, we'll make some biscuits, have it with your tea, that'll sweeten your tea because you're sweet shit otherwise because mm. you haven't got the rations. So by 1945, uh, it had become a uh, reflex, uh, reflex to reach for biscuits in a tin uh, when the kettle went on. So I suppose that's, you're used to doing it, that's just what happens. So before that point, biscuits were not associated with tea? No, so before that, that point, so before pre-1942, they weren't sort of linked until, because that's when the biscuits company sort of stepped in and said, fuck it, you ain't got sugar, have a biscuit. It's interesting, and actually... So I, everyone I know who's older, they either have no sugar in a tea because they've stopped doing it. But like, if you, I remember when I was I was younger, all my grandparents had really sweet teas, and I, I gather this was because anyone who went through rationing, who had no sugar, really valued it when they could have it. And like my father-in-law, for example, he he have like he'll have three or four sugars in a tea, right? He'll go fucking hard. I'm like bloody hell, son, but. He grew up in that, he, you know, in the sort of fifties and stuff, where yeah. it was like we can buy a kilo of sugar from the supermarket, yeah. and everyone's like, he, he, it's like they almost couldn't believe it because they've been with that. Well, no, rationing was still going actually when he was younger. Mm. Rationing was twelve years after, I think, after forty-five, so in the fifty-seven or something. Yeah. It was like a long time. Rationing was still going. I think it was twelve years. So, oh, like, it's pre-sixties, is when he's, yeah, yeah it's it was. So he probably grew up in a time when there were still rations. So he really like he likes a sweet tea. He likes. I mean, he's not like a, he's got a sweet tooth, but it, sugar in his tea is something he really is like. No, I said, how many sugars do you want in your tea once? He's like, ah, oh, four, four or five. I'm like, <laughs> that's like the, the fuck. It's like, what? like it just blew my mind. I'm like, it's one or two, right? It's one or two. It's no, you know, you have or, or to be, you have sugar in your tea. Yes, that's one, right? Everyone has like you have sugar or no sugar. That's the two options. Like, there's no like four. Four on the cards. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not giving you four sugars. I mean, I do because I mean, you know, whatever. But it's um, you know, he's not going. He's not. I don't think he's getting diabetes. But it's it's kind of mad. But like that was uh, a different time, and because they had, they grew up at a time where they didn't have it. 
it's so much more valuable to them now they're old. So it's, oh, it's interesting. But um, I didn't know that's where the biscuit tea connection came from. I just must make sense to me. Dip a biscuit in your tea. But yeah. In that case, you're welcome. Thank you, mate. You've learned my brain. You've forced thoughts in through my uh, ear holes. <laughs> um, all right, did meerkats. All right, this is nasty. Oh, so nasty. It's so nasty. Funnel web spiders. No. No, right, stop that. That's the facts. Done. Lovely. Lovely. That's the nice fact. Yep. They, they live in holes. They dig holes and they live in holes in the ground, right? Yep. The Sydney funnel web spider is the fastest killing spider in the world. No. Uh, With a bite, it can kill you in 15 minutes. Now, their burrow, characteristic, has a irregular silk trip lines radiating from the entrance. Unlike some trapdoor spiders, they don't build lids in their burrows. They have these open holes so people just see them and they go what's that so I look a little mouse you might wander in there and they have all these trip wires and they wait at the wait at the bottom of the burrow and they just wait for the fuckers to wander in and then they grab them they literally dig like a nice little inviting little looking hole and insects and birds or you know mice or whatever the fuck did you just do yeah I did do you know why because you stressed me out with fucking funnel webs <laughs> so, uh. sorry <laughs> uh. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I've got. My, oh, so that's my fact. That's my fact. I've got a silly thing now. I'm gonna. Oh, right, you think you're so... the, you wait to hear my last silly thing? <laughs> yeah, on. Okay, you. now gerbils. <laughs> all right, go on. <clears throat> and the most famous of all gerbils. Right? Yeah. A great, great adventure is waiting for you ahead. Hurry onward, let me wing, so you will soon be dead. The journey before you may be long and filled with woe, but you must escape the game man's ass or the tale can't be told. Let me wings. 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 I've never heard this before. You've never heard this before? <laughs> You've never seen this episode of South Park? With Let me wings the jewel? No, I don't think... I, oh, I might have fuck. done, but it might have been so long ago. <laughs> I've got four more verses. I'm, oh, no, not, no, I'm not singing it if you don't know it. Cause no, you no. Oh, no, I do know it. I do know it. I do. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> go on. Carry on. <laughs> Lemmy Winks' his journey is distant, far and vast to find his way out of the gay man's ass. <laughs> Road ahead is filled with danger and fright, but push forward, Lemmy Winks, with all of your might. Lemmy Winks. Lemmy Winks. Lemmy Winks. Lemmy Winks. Lemmy Winks. Lemmy Winks. Sparrow Prince lies somewhere up ahead. Don't look back, let me wings, or you will soon be dead. Let me wings, let me wings, the time is growing late. Slow down now and seal your fate. Let me wings, <laughs> let me wings, let me wings, let me wings, let me wings, let me wings. Take the magic hammer torch to help you on your way. There's still a lot of ground to cross inside a man so gay. Inside a lawyer's adventure, your strength will still lie within. Freedom from the ass of doom is a treasure you will win. <laughs> and it goes on. Sorry, so <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot more. It's a lot more. But yeah, I mean, if you haven't seen it, fuck. You just need to go and see the Emmy Wings. Fuck. Okay. Well, I know what you're doing next. Yeah, the Emmy Wings. That was uh, that was my missus. She's like, I've said about gerbils. She's like, well, Lemmy Wings is the only gerbil that you need to have a note. Surely, I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> probably right. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I've seen that. It's this all a Richard Gere thing, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? yeah. Because yeah. they put it in, in <laughs> Mr. Slave's ass. Oh, Mr. Was, Slave. Yeah. Mr. Slave. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. He's just Jesus like does. they put the because he's trying to get um uh, yeah he's trying to get fired for being gay. So he brings. Oh, I thought you weren't recording, but you are recording. You cheeky little fucking logic. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, it just he brings it. He brings his Mr. Slave into the class and as a science experiment puts a gerbil up his ass. Uh, so that everyone goes home, tells their parents, teachers and their parents, and he gets fired. He really wants to get fired, um, and uh, yeah, and then it just goes in the adventure of Lemmy Winks, the gerbil, the gerbil king. I think he is ringing a bell, but again, it's been so long because I'm not, I I didn't it's ever watch fr- South Park in a, in a row like episode after episode. It's got random. <laughs> there's, there's loads of there's loads of other shit. There's like there's cut out a fish car, <laughs> I can't even do it. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Bastard trap. <laughs> Bastard trap, bastard mouth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 
There's lots of fish puns. Oh, fuck. All right, I'll put it on in a minute. You're a sick fuck for not knowing yeah, that. Sorry. God damn you. God damn you. You ruined it. You ruined it. Well, that's that's me spent. Right. <laughs> Are you ready for Tell me. the Biz Quiz? Biz Quiz. Love me. Biz Quiz. Standard. Right, so the opening quiz round. Okay. Biscuits consumed per capita in kilograms. So, which country has eats the most biscuits per capita in kilograms? See, I want to say Britain because yeah. we're bother- yeah 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 okay the standard. We're biscuit friendly. We're just we're, where will they go? Where biscuits got to die. Now go name some other countries that you think would be next. America, not even on the top eight. Well, are you? Surely, should we? Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Uh, Germany. Six. Six, okay. Um, France. Third. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. See, we've got more in common than we think. Mm. Yeah. You guys are all right. Yeah, they're not the bad. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I, I really struggled with this one. I, I, I'm, I, trying I, to think, I'm trying to think of people who would... I tell you what, I think maybe a Scandinavian country might get a biscuit. Um, no, maybe not, maybe not. Uh, I'm trying to read you. Keep, he keeps cocking his head like he's like a like a budgie or something. Like, Ooh. you Ooh. might be able to guess the answers. <laughs> Baba de Boopi, <laughs> it, Italiano. Of Second. course, they have a biscuit with the coffee. The coffee, the biscotti, the biscotti. Baba de Boopi. So it goes: UK, Italy, France. Okay, okay. Well, so say? Finish, finish. The, so it's so UK, Italy, France. Belgium? Nope. Czech Republic. Oh, fucking hell. Czech Republic. It's Europe, right? Hmm? Europe? You you, you really obviously taking my um, my geography knowledge into more credit than it should be. <laughs> I don't even know how fucking got it. Um, I don't think so. Okay. Um... No, no, I think, they're, I think they're in Eurovision. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Mate, Slovakia. Oh, I'm not going to get Slovakia. Germany. <laughs> Who's next? Slovenia. Uh, Yugoslavia. Why would you eat a biscuit? It's not even a country anymore. <laughs> it's not even a country anymore. Why would you eat a biscuit? Uh, because you're hungry. Because you're hungry? Yeah. yeah? Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, That's a really good clue. <laughs> but I haven't got any clues to the next one. Poland. <laughs> What's not going to get that? No. I thought, come land? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Romania. Ah, oh, yes. So that's, obviously, that's, of course, fucking Romania, because they're, they're so known for their they're biscuits. They're known for the biscuits, yeah. <laughs> right, so that's that. Okay, so we've got a quiz round, and one of them, yep. if you get it, you get a prize. Oh, go on. Okay, so question number one. Yeah, go on. Which biscuit, similar to Eccles cake, consists of currants squashed and baked between two thin oblongs of biscuits? Oh, shit. Um, I know one. Because um, when I had Eccles cake for the first time, I was like, oh, this tastes just like... Oh, fuck, what are they called? Um, if you need any clues, just say. Oh, I'm just trying to remember what they're called because I had them when I was younger. I was like, oh, I know these because Eccles cake is like a big version of these little ones you used to get. Yeah. They were like little rectangles and they were just like. It's like, yeah, it's like raisin mush inside baked pastry or something. (laughs) Um, Oh, for biscuits sake. Um, Although I would say they're not really biscuits, honestly. I'm not sure they're biscuits. They're, they're more cakey than biscuit. I, I'm sorry. It's your own, it's your own logic. Um, you there. Sorry. sorry. Gary Baldies. Oh, no, that's not my man. Okay. Oh, in that case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fair play, fair play. Do McVitie's ginger nuts contain nuts? No. No, exactly. Katie actually said that. Um, that's, that's quite an easy one, which is, is fair enough. Which biscuit would you be eating if the rapper said you got a grin to get it in? This I'm sorry, I don't I don't yeah, I don't you know. You might not want to tell you. Yeah, I probably will. Wagon wheels. Okay. 
Okay. I, I remember it, but I fucking love Wagon Wheels. I was a savage little fat kid. Are they biscuits? Well, they've got a biscuit base. Because there's a biscuit base with a marshmallow. Blah, blah, blah. So does a cheesecake. Yeah, they're biscuits, aren't they? <laughs> a biscuit. <laughs> it's like a yeah. fucking... <laughs> I, I, I typed in biscuit. So does a cheesecake. <laughs> but Jaffa cakes fucking aren't because they're called cakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you, mate. You don't have to keep yeah. fighting me on no, this. No, I know, I know. I know. It's just, I know. It's, for so many people can bite me back in the ass. All these facts, right? Some of these aren't going to be like biscuits or related, but fuck it. I've done some research. I'm happy. I like a quiz. Right. Which biscuit produced originally by Burton's food for over 50 years were named after a character from the Beano comics? Sorry, one more time. I'm sorry. No, I totally can't. zonked out there. I was like, just. Yeah, I think it's my dulcet tones. Uh, I, it I, just, yeah. I listen back to a podcast. I think, mate, you speak special. 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 <laughs> Which biscuits produced originally by Burton's Foods yes. for over 50 years were yes. named after a character from the Beano comics? I have no idea, mate. Jamie Dodgers, named after Roger the Dodger. Oh, yeah, okay. From the mid-1970s to the 1990s, which company used the advertising slogan, If you like a lot of chocolate on your biscuit, join our club. Yeah. What's yeah. the brand? As we is isn't it? Is it not? No. It was the same one. No. Wasn't it the same? Oh, I think they might have changed. To, uh, I think they might have changed. I think they've, they've they amalgamated. Club bars. Yeah. I can have them. The same brand as, as if I count biscuits. Um, are they? Oh, fuck. I don't know. Jacobs. Uh, not the same as the Crackers. Oh, I, I think so. I presume so. Because you can't get the two same names here. The packaging of which biscuit has displayed the slogan... One may lead to another. <clears throat> um, one may lead to another. Um, one may lead to another. Mm -hmm. I'm giving clues like a madman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What are these? Chocolate fingers. Yay, chocolate yeah. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so I was doing like bloody... Um, oh, God, yeah. I had no idea. I, I had no idea. <laughs> I was doing Pan's Labyrinth sort of hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> um, which Scottish company manufactures the milk chocolate coated caramel wafer biscuits? <laughs> it makes so much sense when you hear the name of them. <laughs> Um, fuck me I'm so bad at this and we looked up this fact I'm sure they've done product placement in shops because we found them we went fuck it we're buying it so we've got some at home <laughs> you did the biscuit research perfect yeah um, oh man um, so <laughs> I don't know no. I don't know man I don't know hey, it's freaking tonics tonics yeah okay 7 million sold per week Seven million times. Yeah. Which 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 ones the the, which, the ones that they come in like a a, a wrapper the um like mean, folded over foil yeah the the, 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 the sort of the, the meringue uh, the meringue um, marshmallow on top of the biscuit no nah, no marshmallow at all it's just that you wafer caramel wafer caramel chocolate we've got those downstairs they're by Tonix I'm sure oh okay. Okay, but fair enough, fair enough. I wouldn't have got Tonics. I never thought them as... I suppose it does sound like... Tonox? It does sound Scottish, but I never got it. But okay, fair play. Last question. Then followed by an impromptu biscuit fact. <clears throat> go, 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 tell me. Which Lion's biscuit, consisting of a circular base of biscuit, topped with a mint flavouring and covered with a layer of milk chocolate, comes in a shiny green foil wrapper? Viscount. Yay! Yay! Oh, one of my count. I'm like one of the fucking years. 
Yeah. Oh, mate, let's, let's split a bike out. Come on. No, I don't need to. We bought a fucking pack on. Oh, you ledge. <laughs> oh, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> you bet off. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so... That whiskey. No, it's, it's mainly, mainly beer because I want oh, too much whiskey. Oh, use the beer whiskey yeah. mixer. Okay, I'll get a little... I get a little towelie. We'll wipe that up. You, I'm, so, uh, I'm so sorry. We're blaming my accounts. You fucking owe us, you bastards. Um, What's my back out? I'm make sure our shit's right. Hang on. The important thing is I want a biscuit. So. Do, it. Do it. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so that's that's all the facts. Now I've got um a little a little thing. This is the bonus fact. This is the bonus facts. What has Indian food mm -hmm. and biscuits mm -hmm. got in common? Yeah. Yeah. No. <clears throat> they are both linked to Dan's genitals. Ginger nuts and Dan's sack. <laughs> for your expression you've been holding it in the whole time like that's I, been I didn't know right I didn't know if I should actually say that or not but Kate was like do it <laughs> so yeah yeah so it's no it's Kate's fault it's, it's her fault all together <laughs> it's always <laughs> fucking Katie's fault alright that girl man he's a, he's a dropper seriously she writes all the podcasts I, I'm, I just I just read it out that's it this is I okay. am the narrator <laughs> I, I read and drink that's, that's my purpose in life <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fair play, fair play. Mm. <laughs> cool. All right. Fuck you, San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, that, that, that's quite fun. Yeah. Well, um, if you bear with us one second, um, we know we're next week. That's all we've established. Yep. We will say adieu to you. Bye. There's this new completely free to play game that everyone is talking about called Stank Splat. Yeah. It's so unique and so addictive, you can't stop playing it. Mm. There's over 147 levels, and each puzzle is even harder than the last. Wow. You play the character Do Dr. Pop Pow, and you have to pop all the evil Lord Hemorrhoidicus stank bubbles. But matching the same coloured stank bubbles to your coloured fresh bubbles cannon bubbles. Cool. It's completely ad free. And too, because everyone hates ads. You've got to download to try this never seen before game. Out of 10% of all the downloads of this game, people can't Come even on. get past the third level. It's so engaging and hard. Download Stank Splat today. Stank Splat is not original as it's the same as most fucking game apps which claims to be unique. There actually are ads and you will get asked every 5 seconds to make an app purchases. There has only been one download so 10% is a fake stat. Please tell us a fact fact or ten We'll all gather round Tell us facts Containing the word fact We love fucking quotes Hello, queers. <laughs> I'll open our great fucking quotes book today and we'll see what we can see, shall we? Yes, please, Uncle Dan. Mm. <laughs> oh, here we are. It's a very good quote today. I'll read it out and we can discuss it, can't we, little James? Yeah! Striving for perfection or wishing for what others have isn't going to get you a fucking star on a sidewalk. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I turned into a burrowing owl there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um. Yeah. I mean, all these things are pretty reasonable. Yeah. Striving for perfection. Striving for perfection. Little, 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 Striving <laughs> for perfection or wishing for what others have isn't going to get you a fucking star on a sidewalk. 
I don't know why having an accent makes it easy to pronounce, but it is apparently. <laughs> and that amount of, of, of buzzed, it's like... <laughs> why is that from Russian uncle I know, Dan? I need to give you the, the, the... I need to tell you the truth, my small boy. Um, so, yeah. Okay. See, the thing is, strive, wishing for others have, fair enough, right? That's not going to get you anywhere. But striving for, 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 striving for perfection might get you a star on a sidewalk. It really might. If you keep pushing yourself, like, I don't know. So I'm not entirely sure I believe I, I'm down with that. But so, so the, the stars on the sidewalk, because they're American, can biscuits and all. Yeah, yeah. Um, how many of those stars at the Hollywood, Hollywood Walk of Fame have they tried really well but didn't get nowhere? I mean, some of them obviously just lucked out. But some of them, I think it, with, with entertainment, Ultimately, like you can be a nepo, nep, you know, like a nepo baby. You can, you can totally. But ultimately, if you're not, it's entertainment. If you're not entertaining, they're not going to book you for the gig, right? So you're never going to get famous. Like, if you think of like comedians or singers or like, no one's up the top of the, you know, no one's the top of that party, and you're like, yeah, they're no good, right? Like, you can not say, I, I, I don't like Taylor Swift, right? But the reason she's <laughs> doing what she's doing or doing so well is because she's entertaining lots of people, right? So. I, f- I kind of feel like if you're a Hollywood Walk of Fame, it's because you're really good at it, and that's probably because you worked really hard at it. So you strive for perfection, and you you did really well, and that's kind of, I mean, I would have thought. So I think you know, the cream does tend to rise to the top of certain fields. So how long have we got till we get our star? Because I think we've we've got like triple figures of listeners now, haven't we? Oh mate, it's sick. Sick, honestly, all across the world, mate. Sweet, sweet podcast money coming in Australia now as well. Fucking mate, dingoes, mate. That's fucking, fucking wombats and, and mongoose, mate. Dude, I've got, I got, I got family, I've got family down there. Okay, you, you got well, nice, nice yeah, Tasmania. We mean you, that was my favorite. My brother's favorite was always Taz. Yeah, I can see that. They had some good cartoons back in the day. Yeah. When I was a uh, when I was a young warthog, I I had a lot of good <laughs> shit. So there was it was Animaniacs was good. We are the Animaniacs. Oh, shoot. Yeah. It's good shit. It's good yeah. shit, man. And that was that was like, um, Freakazoid. That was really fun. Freakazoid. Chimpanzee. That's all. That's really Freak of me. Freak of you. Down there. Whatever. There's a no. That's Spider Man. I don't know. <laughs> I, got, yeah. I went. I went into. Like a 90s Spider-Man show. Actually, there might have been 60s Spider-Man. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've gone on a tangent once again. Yeah. But I don't know if I agree with that quote, is what I'm saying, which is controversial, because that's been mm. a pretty good book so far, both weeks. But I feel like working really hard... I feel as it's, like, you know that whole thing of follow your dreams, right? I had this, this guy saying the other week, like, on some podcast, he's like saying, the thing is, that's terrible advice. If you tell, like, especially celebrities saying, like, follow your dreams, <laughs> it's like, that's not... That, that he sort of says, you should go on. There's a quote as at work. Aim for the moon. You might not get there, but you might still pick up some stars on the way. Super gay. Yeah, honestly, that, that quote is like, oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no? No. I can't, no. I can't say no. Oh, do you know what? I've not said this for a long time. I call BS on that. I ain't going to pick up no fucking stars on there. They're going to be really hot. Really hot. There's... Well, there's, there's certain professions where if you don't hit it hard... Then it's like it is literally win or lose. If you like, if you're a comedian, yeah, you can make a living and not make it, make it. But really, if you want to make proper money, mm. you've got to be really, really big. And you can go, you can go to every club all the time. But ultimately, if you're not hitting it, you have to play your strengths. You have to sort of say, I'm, I'm good at this thing. I will become excellent at this thing, and I will, you know, if you work in a field. Like, I don't know, if you're a roofer, right, or a plumber, Hmm? if you get really good at those things, you are set for life. You're never not going to have work, and you'll always, and and because you're good at it, properly good at it, you will get more money than, and and it's like, that is a more successful field, and the chance, but like, there's there's enough, you know, for example, in that, right, if you're halfway competent at being a plumber, for example, if you're a, you know, a C-plus plumber, you are paying your mortgage. You're going to be fine. Whereas if you're a C plus actor, you're a dead body on CSI Miami, <laughs> and you you're not making twenty grand a year, right? You're not. 
So I'm like, it's it's like that's it's not you're not going to earn level wage, but you were you know under a sheet on a show once, <laughs> and you're doing like you know community theatre or whatever the fuck, right? So it's it's like you you, but if you sort of say okay, I have a skill set here, I have an aptitude for this, then work to your strengths, and then you can do the fun stuff afterwards, right? See, we both followed our, our dreams, our, our, our skill sets, didn't we, right? Yeah. You worked in the financial sector, and you were like, I have a strength here, I will push into that. And I was like, I, you know, I'm going to go and do this thing over here. And then this podcast thing, this is our dream thing, but this is a separate thing. This is like, yeah. this is this is our side hustle, right? And if we, you know, we can throw enough time into it, hopefully we can, you know. But um, and obviously this, you know, huge amounts of money coming in already, but... You know, if we can um, expedite that and make that even more, then that's great. Yeah, pretty sure I made that word up. I like that though. It's good. It's expedite. Good it's sort like expedite. expedite. It was expedite and expedite. That might be a word. Expedite. Keep it. Again, we were talked about in the previous podcast. I've made up words before. I yeah. can like them. Compasalt. Compasalt. Expedite the hate. Yeah. Let's do this. Okay. Fuck you, lies yourself. Hmm. You wait, Susie that on countdowns gonna be using them words and saying Fucking right. Yeah. I heard this on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. you fucking Susie that's blaming a listener. I'm oh, sorry. But we we we're two classy chaps and there's even videos of me wearing a, like a top hat doing Sprite Challenge. That shows how classy I am. It's true. It's true. So, um, yeah. You did you did rag that, that bottle. You did oh. misuse mis- anyway, um I feel like we've said everything we can say about that quote. I'm happy. I'm I'm glad. I'm proud. I'm uh, fed rigid. Uh, next week, thirteen. Unlucky for some. For some, but not for you, listeners, because again, more rich marrow and jelly of, <laughs> of truth dripping in your ears. Mm-hmm. Good night. Have Goodbye. a lovely time. Love you.